Two days ago marked the three-year anniversary of the ending of Game of Thrones, yet with most shows that have their anniversaries of their last episode like Breaking Bad or The Sopranos, Game of Thrones' anniversary did not feel the same. That's because there is nothing really to celebrate. Those two shows that I just mentioned before both had incredible endings that left the audience satisfied, but what Game of Thrones gave to its viewers was far from sufficient. For this video, we're going to be doing a quick analysis of what Game of Thrones did wrong in its final season and how these decisions killed off public interest for the rest of the universe, along with what they should have done in my opinion. This is how you kill what could have been the greatest TV show ever. Now first, let me defend and remind ourselves of how good of a show Game of Thrones used to be. Nowadays, when we think of the greatest TV show ever, most of us think Breaking Bad. But to be honest, I think a lot of this can be attributed to the fact that Game of Thrones took itself out of that conversation with its abysmal last season. Breaking Bad is the greatest TV show there is, I agree. But Game of Thrones at its peak was in my opinion, and I believe the majority of people's opinion, the greatest TV show ever. I love Breaking Bad, but moments like the Red Wedding, the Battle of the Bastards, the Mountain vs. the Viper, and the death of Ned Stark remind me of how when Game of Thrones had its highs, they were the greatest moments of television that I had ever seen. And let's not forget that Game of Thrones is a fantasy, which in my opinion makes it hard to pull off being a great show. There are hardly any great fantasy movies that I can think of besides Lord of the Rings, and I wouldn't count Harry Potter as fantasy because it's more so adventure, and it's much more modern when compared to GOT or Lord of the Rings, but when it comes to live action fantasy shows, Game of Thrones is really the only one that comes to my mind. The only other one that I can think of is The Witcher, but that's still getting established in my opinion. Now let's get back to Game of Thrones. I think the reason why these moments that I mentioned before were so great was because Game of Thrones lacks something that all other movies and TV shows have, and that's plot armor. Game of Thrones showed you right at the end of its first season that it's ready and willing to let its characters die, no matter how much you love them. This is what made fights like the Battle of the Bastards and the Mountain vs. the Viper so entertaining because we genuinely did not know who was going to win. So when we think back to our knowledge and thoughts about the final season of Game of Thrones before it came out, we honestly had no idea who would win or how it would unfold. There were theories circulating and some gained more traction than others, and all ultimately turned to be better than the rush pile of shit that we got, but my point is just that we had absolutely no clue what was going to happen during the finale of this show. Looking back at the show, a lot of people say that Game of Thrones started to die down a bit after season 4, but honestly I think seasons 1 through 4 were just extremely amazing and extremely hard to top. Season 5 was still good, it just wasn't as great as those first 4 seasons. Now on to season 6, which is when they ran out of book material and were on their own. Honestly, I like season 6. Yes, the dialogue and the plot took a bit of a downgrade compared to the seasons that had the books to fall back on, but I was still happy with a lot of the plot points that we were given. I love the John reveal and the origin of Hodor, and his sacrifice remains as one of the greatest Game of Thrones moments in my opinion. So at the end of season 6, even though we knew that D&D had run out of book material, I still had faith that they could do the show justice and end it right. But then season 7 came out and it changed my whole line of thinking. Season 7 was bad, and a lot of it had to do with poor choices in writing and the characters acting nothing like themselves. For example, Tyrion goes from being one of the greatest minds of the Seven Kingdoms to an absolute idiot when he suggests that they have to capture a white to get his narcissistic sister to have an alliance. Cersei also never faces any scrutiny after literally blowing up the Sept of Baelor, and the most obvious thing to talk about in Season 7 is how Daenerys and her dragons basically teleport to save Jon Snow's men after they go on a really dumb expedition which then allows Night King to get his own dragon. But these horrible moments were made up for by scenes that we had waited years to see like Jon and Daenerys' first meeting, which was the meeting of fire and ice. Despite the Night King getting the dragon through very stupid means, like the expedition being completely nonsensical and the dragons fast traveling like it's Skyrim, it was still awesome to see the Night King show off his power in this season by destroying the wall, which in my honest opinion saved the season. The scene where the Night King destroys the wall was so long awaited and honestly just might be my favorite season finale Game of Thrones had since this seemed like this was the beginning of the end for the human characters and because this was something that affected everyone. Yes, the season 1 finale is goaded, but holy shit, season 7's ending was amazing because this seemed like the beginning of the end for the Seven Kingdoms. The mystery and the aura of this unstoppable force was what made the show so interesting. We had no idea what the Night King wanted, but we knew he was more powerful than any of the human factions. And after he killed Viserion, it seemed like no dragon was going to stop him either. This unstoppable force seemed like it was going to be the grand finale of the show, with the Night King either being triumphant or being stopped in some mystical way. But instead, what did we get? Night King after curb stomping everyone in Winterfell gets stopped by a knife trick? There are so many things wrong with this send-off, and to me this is the most obvious error in Game of Thrones' final season. 
I understand Arya is sneaky, but Night King is shown to be above typical stealth and even time travel like what we see with Bran when he tries to spy on the Night King and the Night King literally grabs him. Also, the Night King literally grabs Arya by the throat and somehow she's completely unaffected, but when the Night King grabbed Bran by the arm for just a few seconds, he left him with a scar and caused him to scream in pain and fear. By getting rid of this unstoppable force early and through a cheap knife trick, it got rid of the mystery of the Night King and what his whole purpose was. The show actually never tells us why the Night King was doing what he was doing and why he wanted to conquer all of West Westeros. Killing off the greatest mystery in the show in just the third episode of the final season shows how careless the writers have become, and for me this was the point where I lost all interest. So after killing 8 years worth of hype and mystery, the show from here on also downgraded with Daenerys' fall into being the Mad Queen just being way too sudden. Her eventually going insane makes sense, but it just felt way too rushed. Jaime's whole character arc is undone when he decides to be with Cersei, even after realizing what a horrible person she is, and let's not forget that they chose the next king of the Iron Throne to be the person who had the greatest story even though Bran did jack shit with his powers besides just watching historical porn. The main thing I want to focus on for this video though is the Night King, since I mentioned before this is the point that made me the most angry at the writers and because I feel like this choice killed off all future interest in the show and its spin-offs for the vast majority of people. The show could have had a much more grand send-off for the Night King, with the Seven Kingdoms uniting because there was no other choice. They could have had Arya infiltrate King's Landing then kill Cersei while dressing up as Jaime, since she had the powers to do that as we saw with the phrase, and this was actually a very popular theory at the time. This would then make use of Arya's powers, and it would let Jaime die an honorable death, as his death would be the sacrifice needed to stop Cersei. After Cersei's death, the people of King's Landing would then really have no choice other than to serve Daenerys as their ruler. This could then lead to a much more large-scale fight, with all of Westeros needing to unite in order to stop the Night King. This is just one way they could have stopped the Night King, but in my honest opinion, the better ending, the one that would make the most sense, would be for Game of Thrones to stick to their guns to the thing that made their show elite, and that is the lack of plot armor. The fact of the matter is the Seven Kingdoms fought with each other and stayed in their own political games, rather than working together and setting aside their differences to address the real threat that was forming. The time to act passed, and making an alliance after the Night King got to the wall and had a dragon was way too late. I'm gonna say it now loud and clear, the Night King should have won. The show made the character way too powerful to dispose of in a typical way, and the show had already established the possibility of characters just ditching Westeros, going on a boat, and only taking the important people, like with what Euron Greyjoy suggested as Cersei. If the Night King had won, this would have stuck to the Game of Thrones message as well. My main takeaway from the series is always that the ordinary man loses. Being born into the right house is crucially important in the Seven Kingdoms, and Game of Thrones as a series always seemed like an allegory on wealth inequality and the games of politics with leaders not choosing the best for their people, and those who do being mercilessly disposed of. In this hypothetical ending of Night King winning, this would stick to the theme that the average man in Westeros is plagued by his leaders and their lack of action. When I draw comparisons from GOT to real life, I think about climate change and how many of our political leaders choose to do nothing or chose to get involved when it was way too late, and they play the games with us, the public, that climate change may be fake or understated, or that it's a problem that's going to cost too many jobs and resources to address, but none of this actually solves the problem. Game of Thrones is similar in the sense of the threat as the army of the undead, and the leaders are doing the exact same thing by not taking action or underplaying it, leaving those who do care to fend for themselves. The Night King winning would stick to this message and prove that the inadequacy of the leaders was their demise, rather than just rewarding it by pulling a cheap knife trick to stop what seemed unstoppable. Killing off the Night King just gave Cersei a free get out of jail card, and I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say seeing how Cersei would deal with the Whites and whether she would compromise to work with Daenerys and Jon Snow would be a lot more interesting and entertaining than what we got. Now let's talk about how just from a marketing perspective, killing off the Night King was a grave mistake. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but there was supposed to be a spin-off for Game of Thrones that would deal with the Long Night. I'm not talking about the episode, I'm talking about a winter that lasted what seemed to be forever, around 8,000 years before Game of Thrones' events. The White Walkers essentially took control of the North for a long time, and lots of humans died. Eventually the First One banded with the Children of the Forest to push back against the White Walkers, and this led the White Walkers to retreat north to establish the lands of Always Winter. There was a prequel plan that even shot a pirate called Blood Moon, which would center around this conflict and the Stark and Lannister houses and detail the origin of the White Walkers. Now HBO officially announced that they would not produce Blood Moon in October of 2019, five months after the end of Game of Thrones, and do we wonder why? Well the reason is pretty clear. Before the White Walkers were all killed off in episode 3 of season 8, everyone wanted to see this prequel. But after they killed off the literal greatest mystery in the show, without ever explaining the motive, people just stopped caring. People don't want to watch a prequel of a great evil where they already know how it ends, nonetheless that it ends in such a dumb way. 
Let's go back to the proposed ending where the Night King wins. Even if they didn't directly explain his motive, it would be fine since everyone would be tuning in to watch Blood Moon to see what the Night King wants and how he was stopped in the first war. Look, we have to remember that at the end of the day, Game of Thrones is a business and they want to get as much money as they can by having as many seasons and spin-offs as possible, but by getting rid of the mystery rather than profiting off of it, they shot themselves in the foot. Having the Night King win doesn't just make sense because he was too big of an issue to solve, or because it seems like the Game of Thrones type of ending to happen with it going against plot armor, it honestly makes the most sense since it would guarantee a spin-off which HBO can milk for even more cash because everyone would be wondering how the hell Night King was stopped by the first men with the Children of the Forest. This is just my argument for how the show should have ended. Honestly, I think anything is better than the rush crater of dog shit that we got. I usually don't buy into conspiracy theories, but I honestly do think that Game of Thrones was rushed so that D&D could move on to Star Wars, and thank god their contracts got terminated because they do not deserve to touch something as holy as Star Wars after ruining what easily could have been the greatest show of all time. I think Game of Thrones needed 2-3 to three seasons to wrap up, and it honestly seems ridiculous that they thought it was possible to close out all the stories within just 6 episodes, but that's just my opinion. There are a lot of great shows that have been on the downturn in recent years, but I feel like that Game of Thrones will forever remain the king of wasted potential. I mean, let's just think about it. Season 8 had the best music, the best effects, the best sets, the highest budget, but none of this mattered because it had writers who didn't care. Ultimately guys, Game of Thrones will have a special place in my heart, but the ending just shows that no series is safe from two idiots with pens. I'm hating on D&D a lot here, but if they wanted out they could've just gotten different writers and directors to replace them, rather than rushing the show that millions of people cared about and gathered around to watch every Sunday for 8 years. The final season of Game of Thrones will remain as living proof that the power of writing can overcome any budget or amazing cast because no amount of money can save you from a bad story. Guys, that is all I have for this video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and please consider checking out my other videos. I am a small channel and these videos take a lot of time to make from the scripting to the recording to the editing, so thank you all so much for the support and it really means a lot to me. If you have any thoughts on the final season of Game of Thrones, please comment them down below and I'd love to see your guys' input. And lastly, I just want to say that I genuinely hope that you all have a great rest of your day.